All right, hello everybody. Today we're going to be taking a look at some of the interesting finds from the Goodwill by the Pound. But first, uh, let's take a look at some of the stuff that I found uh, at the just the regular Goodwill next to the Goodwill by the Pound, including this lovely Fiend Folio. Now, obviously, this is an older D and D book, and there's some uh, there's some damage and wear and tear to the uh, cover. Uh, and for $9, I mean, this is not like a super amazing steal, but the actual pages are in very good condition. And, uh, you know, I, I love old books like this. This always gives you uh, a lot of, like, really interesting um, choices for monsters. And the Fiend Folio is interesting just because there's a lot of stuff that just is not in the normal... Uh, it, it, that's not in the... Uh, current D&D &D genres. A lot of interesting stuff here, like a lot. So very much a good deal. Even at $9, if it was any more, I would probably not bought it just because it's not in the greatest condition. But you know what? Even with these beat up things, I'm not buying this as a collector's edition. I'm buying this to read it and get ideas. Uh, Dungeon Dad actually does a lot of cool videos talking about older uh, D, D monsters and using those in 5e uh so yeah fiend folio a lot of cool stuff in there uh for stuff that i also bought i got this uh copy of dragon magazine just randomly there this was all by itself i had bought in a lot of dragon magazines from a thrift store a while back this was two bucks uh this had a lot of stuff about Spelljammer. It had a lot of stuff about pirates and stuff. So it's interesting. Uh, these magazines are very well made. There's a lot of like very interesting artwork and all sorts of cool stuff in here. So I think this was definitely an interesting buy. It's in good condition. Again, I love reading stuff like this to get ideas for future projects. All right. Um... So, I have my box of stuff that I got here. Um, the person only charged me 20 cents a pound for this stuff. So, I got this at a really good rate. Uh, speaking about books, I found this Spelljammer book. This was a lovely little find. And I've never read any of the Spelljammer stuff. But, heck, uh, maybe I'll try to find the first book <laughs> in this before I read it. But, you know, I, it's just interesting to find stuff like that. Okay. Uh, and <laughs> so finally, and then, this again, this was from the Goodwill by the Pound proper. We found this lovely artifact. Uh, and as you can see, the previous owner had attempted to put notes in here to try to figure out what was going on. Because they're trying to decipher this. Because they, they were probably thinking to themselves, I must not be understanding this. Because if, if I run the game as written, this is going to be an incredibly boring and frustrating game where combat's just going to take hours and hours and uh, there's literally no point to it. And uh, yeah, so <laughs> I will note too that this book was actually in the Goodwill by the Pound section where people just grab a bunch of stuff. And then they go through it and they, like, toss the stuff that they don't want. So somebody could have gotten this for 20 cents a pound. They grabbed it and then decided, you know what? This book is just garbage. I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> and so this was this was thrown back. Somebody did not want to pay 20 cents a pound. I, uh, I did pay 20 cents a pound for this. Uh, and you know what? Uh, I think I know just the place for this book. All right, now to the non-book stuff, uh, and I got a lot of interesting stuff. I got this battle tank from uh, the company that I can never remember how this is pronounced. Tatamiya, Tamiya. Anyways, this is a unsealed thing. So obviously, when stuff like this happens, sometimes you'll find stuff like this at Goodwill by the Pound, and it's unsealed, so people uh, won't want to uh, grab it because it is unsealed. So you don't know what you're gonna get. Now, the reason I grabbed it is because I took a look, quick look in there, and it seems like a lot of the stuff is in there, so it's definitely, it might be partial, 
but it just seems like a lot of the stuff actually is in there. And this is fascinating because this would make this would have made a really nice bit of terrain if I was doing like uh, if I was doing you know terrain for like 40k. This would be amazing. So I, I grabbed this, and I will probably give this to a friend who likes uh, doing 40k stuff. Some ice cube trays that are have skulls on them. So I thought these were cool. These were like big enough to the point where if you make kind of like half casts of them in some material you could probably use these for like wall texture or something like that so that was an interesting find um you know you find random stuff like this like a sealed speaker head spoon splitter i don't i don't know if i even need a splitter but i picked that up uh we got some random patches this has nothing to do with D, &D. this is just patches that i thought were interesting uh, we have some Westinghouse, uh, super bright bulbs. So, these bulbs here are very interesting, and I'm gonna see if I can use these for a setup. I know that Wylock, uh, just did a whole video about using, um, LED bulbs like this. Actually, I don't even know if these are LED bulbs. I, I know nothing about electronics or anything like this, but... Yeah, these were interesting. So I'm going to see if I can use these in some sort of project. Uh, just a bunch of random bits of stuff here. This is obviously the setup for some sort of toy. But I thought it would be cool. This would be an easy way if I needed like some rocky terrain. It's an easy way to include, to bulk it up without using more expensive materials. Obviously, good thing here. Let's, uh, what else we got here? Ah, uh, just some random bric-a-brac. I got this lovely uh, Duracell flashlight, which actually is still going. It's got a zoom focus, so it seems like a pretty decent flashlight. So, ah, uh, we have going all these little, tiny little Swiss Army pocket knives here, which, uh, you know... You never know. I think this is like kind of like a knockoff one. I don't think this is an actual Swiss Army Park hand knife, but I'll see. And we got this clear plastic thing here, which I think would make a nice little spell effect or a, well, I mean a spell effect or maybe just even a, a plastic dome, like it's a glass dome to put on something. So that was a nice little bit of uh, bric-a-brac. And I got e an ant. As always, these little ants are very nice looking for giant ants. I found a couple scattered uh, dollar store skeletons, which I probably shouldn't have bought because these are like a dollar for a packet. But they're really light, so uh, I probably didn't overpay too much. Oh, we got some random board game stuff here. I think this is actually... Might be Game of Thrones stuff? I'm not quite sure. Um, actually, I, I, have, I have no idea what board game this is from, frankly. But they looked really cool. Like you had some... You had some uh, sword and the stone type thing. You got a crown... You've got a giant, you know, gauntlet. And you have a massive book. And you have this. Which is just, you know, a lovely... So these obviously would make really nice little bits and pieces for D&D. &D, uh, for, you know, either a dungeon crawl thing or something like that. Actually, you know what? I'll save that for last. Uh, also, I got this. Which is a clear acrylic um, case thing. And this would be really nice for displaying large miniatures. It it really looked bad. Ooh, sorry about that. It really looked bad, but I cleaned it up. So it doesn't look as bad as it did. It still needs to be cleaned up a little bit. But this looked uh, like it was busted in several places. And it's really not, so... This would be a great little... It's interesting because, like, both sides come out. So this would make a nice little display case for D&D &D miniatures. So I picked that up. 
Again, 20 cents a pound. Uh, you can't go wrong. And finally, the absolute biggest and best find from this whole thing. I found a bunch of Mage Knight stuff, which is really cool because uh, <laughs> Mage Knight does have some nice robot guys that uh, you can easily convert for DMD. I found some Mage Knight skeletons. I haven't really ever found many of these guys. They're all hunched over, wonky whiz kid stuff, but you can get that situated again. But they're nice enough sculpts. And look at that. It's the classic skeleton. Uh, a bunch of these treasure chests, which I already had. Um, these little counter things, which are nice. Uh, got some that have been knocked off the base, uh, including this little, this little orc guy here who's dressed up as a eagle. Never seen that one before. Uh, was there any other good ones? So I, I got like a couple. I don't know how many miniatures. Maybe like, maybe like a dozen miniatures, including this lovely. Minotaur here. Um, the big thing was all of this terrain stuff. Now these are the Mage Knight tiles. And I really like how these look. And uh, you can set these up, much, much like uh, most dungeon tiles. And they just kind of... They fit together in kind of a wonky fashion. Look at that texture. That's actually very nice looking. So I was thinking I would actually keep these and maybe use them for uh, some sort of addition to my normal uh, little things. Originally what I saw first uh, were the doors. And these are big chunky doors. Some of them, the ones with the skulls on them actually don't look all that great. I know there was a, yeah, here we go. There was a very nice looking door. I like. I like the metal door here with the the undead face on it. This was pretty cool looking. Again, pretty big and chunky. Um, so basically what I got are, I was really hoping that I might find, it looks like this is just the, the door set basically. Uh, I was really hoping I might find some of the, um, oh, what do you call them? Uh, the dungeon dressing sets they had with the cages and stuff, because there was a lot of cool stuff in that. Uh, but it looks like it was just uh, walls, floors, and doors. Which, again, uh, for 20 cents, I mean, yeah. This will make a nice little, like... I could make it just a big room with these, and then kind of hook it on to one of my other rooms there. So, I might do a... So, yeah. So, again, I can understand why these didn't become, like, hugely popular... Because uh, for dungeon tiles, you kind of have to, like... I It looks like these are really made for a specific type of setup. And it would be a little bit... You would have to kind of, like, plan out a little bit more. Other, other dungeon sets, like, you could just kind of snap together easily enough. Or, you know... I, I use stuff that's basically, like... I love the... Uh, let me show you here. I love the uh, Reaper dungeon tiles, which are just... They're just tiles. You put them, just put them down on the thing. And then the Dwarven Forge stuff. Same thing. They're just tiles. You just slam them on the uh, game mat. And you're ready to go. Uh, with these, you kind of have to fit them together. And then keep on fitting them together. And if you don't get it in the first time, it does that. So, yeah. And then they have the little holes. This is a little bit similar. And I would say it's a little bit uh, inferior to the um, to the Dungeons and Lasers style setup. That setup uh, is much more interesting when it comes to the walls and everything. Now, with this setup, you can set up walls in the middle like this just by shoving the walls in the middle there. So that's okay looking, uh, but you still have these... Man, I don't know how... These are very tough, but, uh, yeah. And then you have the, uh... So, yeah, I don't, uh... I don't know how much I really like or dislike these. But, uh... 
yeah, see, it's impossible to build out. You have to, like I said, you have to kind of like plan ahead and then slowly kind of shove them together if they fit. There we go. Boy, WizKids uh, had a problems with trying to set up dungeon tiles even before they did their whole, uh, um, the new sets, which were a little bit difficult to put together as well. But I, here's the thing, I really do like the way these look. And they do have a nice amount of texture. So I will set these up as a room, and then I'll be able to attach them to the rest of my dungeon tiles. So, yeah, it's very interesting. Did I get any other cool doors? There was the cool undead door there. There's the kind of orc skull door, um, which might look better after it's painted. Uh, and I think that's about it. So yeah, it's just pieces of uh, doors and floors. Oh, and I found this one. Uh, I found this one wing, which was sad because I really wish I knew which miniature this came from. But uh, it looks pretty cool. I might try to use that with something. But yeah, a nice amount of miniatures that I can use uh, to make some D and D miniatures if I want to. A bunch of these big old chunky uh, chests. Some of them still in the package because. You used to get these when you bought like a pack of Mage Knight stuff. You get one of the chests in the Mage Knight package, uh, and a nice selection of doors, walls, and floors, which will be enough to make a nice little room. Uh, yeah, believe it or not, um, that was only I paid twenty cents a pound for all of this stuff. And again, I don't know if the person was cutting me a deal or what, but I uh, was very happy with that price. I got quite a bit of interesting little things at the Goodwill by the Pound. And certainly in this case, uh, it'll be much easier to do crafting stuff with this because it's already, it's already fantasy themed. <laughs> so I'll be showing you more D&D stuff uh, and I will be showing you more of the Goodwill finds coming up. And I will see you all later.